Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a This Year in Perfumery, and we're going to highlight the year 1984. So we're really in the prime of some of my uh, favorite fragrances from my favorite decade in perfumery. So I'm very excited to talk about some of these. Some of these you've seen me talk about in the past uh, on other videos, highlighting notes or, you know, perfumers uh, or houses. And some of them are completely new. There's some from my collection I, I know I haven't shown yet. And so you're in for a bit of a treat. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about some things that happened in the year 1984. Some uh, notable events, if you will. Uh, the Indian Prime Minister uh, Indira Gan uh, Gandhi was murdered. And um, there was... A song you might have heard that dropped that was very popular called Purple Rain. Uh, that really made a splash. Apple aired the first Macintosh commercial in 1984, believe it or not. Uh, the Soviets boycotted the um, Summer Olympics. And um, there was a uh, poison uh, gas escape from uh, a, a Dow chemical factory that, that made the news. And of course, the first outbreak of, uh, of AIDS also apparently was um, first detected in 84, or really took off, let's say, in 1984, um, when it really made the news and, and, and started to, um, to gain traction in, in everyday life, if you will, with people. Um, so those are some notable events that happened in the year 1984. Some popular songs, I mentioned Purple Rain, um, When Doves Cry was another one from Prince. Uh, there was uh, Time After Time by Cindy Lau from Cindy Lauper um, and Karma Chameleon uh, and a um, couple other hits, uh, but I think from the top billboards, those are the, the ones that jump out. And then as far as the movies go, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom was one of the biggest ones. Beverly Hills Cop also came out in 84. I believe that was in... Uh, uh, actually, that might have been early 85, so don't quote me on that, but I think it was the end of 84, early 85, um, and Ghostbusters came out in the middle of 1984, that's probably one of my favorites from 84, along with Police Academy, that's another one of my favorites, so, um, those are just some history on the year of 1984, some things that happened, uh, and so you kind of get a feel for the time. If you were around then, I wasn't. I was born in 85, um, so I was not around for, for 1984, but those are some things that you might remember, and if you were alive during that time, it probably uh, felt like it was yesterday that all this stuff happened. So, just some quick history before we get into the fragrances. Now, before I jump into... Um, before I jump into the list of fragrances in my collection from 1984, a couple things that I want to do, sticking with tradition, I want to talk about my scent of the day. Now, the scent of the day today is absolutely insane. Um, there's no other way to put it. This is an insane fragrance. Look, I have a new microfiber cloth for you guys. Um, so let's make sure this is nice and clean and devoid of fingerprints. Don't want the uh, fingerprint police knocking on my door. So, this is Serge Luton's Baptême de Feu, which literally translates to Baptism by Fire. And this is a 2016 release. Christopher Sheldrake is the nose. Let me just give this a fresh spray. Um, I, this is an absolutely insane composition. I told uh, Rich Mitch today as we were chatting, I wore this today because I heard on his stream yesterday someone mentioned it and I thought, I haven't worn this in a long time. I need to whip this out. And this is my scent of the day. This feels like it was created by someone who is in, in an insane asylum. I mean, literally, it smells like it was created by a madman to me. Uh, I love it. I like it because it's so different. But... Someone commented on my video the other day that I talked about Beaufort London's Rake and Ruin. And they said they love fragrances that are weird and different. If that's you, you have to get your nose on this. So this opens up to my, to my nose. This opens up with a huge blast of tangerine. 
almost like the tangerine that you get in Frederick Mall's Monsieur. Um, and then Osmanthus. Those are the two in the openings that really kind of complement each other. So this fruity floral Osmanthus. Osmanthus is a flower that tends to give off this nectarine peach type vibe, if you will. Uh, and then the tangerine is very prominent. And then it brings in a couple notes that are absolutely insane. Castorium, gingerbread, okay? So it smells like you're at some sort of winter festival, um, but maybe in the back where things are a little bit dirty from the castorium. It's not heavy castorium. It's not old school castorium because this is a 2016 bottle. And I think the very next year they put this in the new bottles. This is uh, the older bottle style, which is the only bottles of Serge Luton's I will actually buy. Um, but if you like weird, strange, um, the Fragrantica shows powdery notes. To my nose, it doesn't smell as powdery as it does... It almost smells like, uh, Rich Mitch said, burning metal, is what he actually said. And, you know, baptism by fire, I think maybe it's a little bit of a play on almost like some uh, interesting advertising because um, the gingerbread reminds you of this Christmas time theme. And in fact, there's a lot of pictures of this on Fragrantica with people taking you know, pictures with like Christmas cookies or gingerbread man or stuff like that. And then it's also called baptism, right? So, um, there's, there's almost this strange connotation of, you know, the, uh, the baptism, the birth of Christ. And then you mix in this, um, the name, Bap, uh, Baptim de Feu. And so I'm not sure exactly what Christopher Sheldrake was going for, but I said it felt like he took his, the genius side of him. You know, every genius comes with a slight bit of madness. That's just the way it is. And he let that, put that madness on a leash and kind of let it walk around for a little bit outside. He gave it some sunlight. Um, this is a mad fragrance. It's not an everyday wear. It's something if you want to be a little bit different, to be challenged, to be, you know to smell something that really is niche and strange, check this one out. It's not so strange that it's not wearable, because it is wearable to my nose. I, I wear this. I like it. But um, it uh, it's not your everyday run-of-the-mill fragrance, okay? So sometimes when you just want something unique and quirky, uh, if you can find these 50 ml bottles, I got this for 50 bucks. So, now you know, before... The prices on these older Serge Luton's go nuts. I did get this a year ago, though. So before prices go nuts, um, check check this out. Okay, now we're going to go to the year 1984. And we're going to start with the biggest bottle in this list. This is a 200 ml bottle. I think I got this from Le Parfumé, uh, if memory serves, up in Canada. But this is called Borsellino. And this is... In Fragrantica, it would just show up as Borsellino, Borsellino, um, Borsellino by Borsellino. They also made a feminine target fragrance that I showed in, if you go look up my video of the feminine targeted fragrances that I own and love and wear, one of the ones that I showed in a mini that I got when I bought this, they sent it to me for free, was called, um, I believe it's Borsellino Donna. Uh, and that's a women's fragrance that was a signature scent of my aunt in the 1990s. Uh, beautiful floral fragrance. This is considered to be a chiffre, but it reminds me of a fougere take on a chiffre, if that makes sense. So there is lavender. E there's even a quoted note on Fragrantica of fern which fern has no smell. The whole point of a fougere was to give everyone an idea of what the fern smelled like if it did have a smell. It doesn't, obviously. So that was kind of the exercise, the, um, that was the intellectual exercise that the perfumers took. So this has fougere elements, 
but it's listed as a Shifra because of the labdanum, uh, the oak moss, and there is a bit of arom there's there's actually a lot of aromatic elements in this. So there's clary sage. There's old school carnation. This hits this this kind of hits that sharp 80s um, fragrance. You know how that uh, I believe Borsellino, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was known for their hats and they were known for um I, I almost think that the cap is almost meant to look like an old school men's top hat, if that makes sense. It's not as distinguishable as the women's. If you check out my uh, women's fragrance and look for that bottle of Borsellino Donna, I mean, it looks like an old school women's cap with a long bill. This still reminds me of an old school men's top hat, but it's a little bit more discreet. It's not as in your face that it's a hat. Um, and I think Borsellino is an Italian company. And this gives off that Italian sharpness that they're known for. I'll show you again in the next fragrance because the next fragrance does something very similar. It's just a lot more well-known. It's a lot more popular than Borsellino. But I got this 200 ml bottle from them. I want to say for maybe $100 or something. It is a splash. People don't like splashes. And um, so I will just decant it into my uh, atomizer and spray away. But uh, for 200 ml... Very glad to have this. This is going to get a lot of use in the summer for me. This is my kind of fragrance. There also is a little bit of a leather note, but it's got, it's almost like the leather is complementary to the rest of the fragrance. The lavender, uh, the old school carnation and clary sage, um, vetiver rounds out the base. You know, it's, it's that type of sharp 80s masculine, which uh, works very well in the heat for me. So even though there's leather, it's not like Bellamy leather where I usually wear those kind of fragrances in the winter. So that's Borsellino, Borsellino. And by the way, before anybody crucifies me on the dates, I just want to let everyone know that I'm pulling the dates from Parfumo, okay? So if um, Fragrantica shows a different date, just know that I've decided to go with Parfumo's dates on these and, and just let the chips fall where they may. So Fragrantica shows 83, Parfumo shows 84, it's 84 that I'm going with. Okay, so now we're going to move on to maybe one of the more famous sharp aromatic fougere fragrances. And this is considered an aromatic fougere, but it shares some features with Borsellino. Now this is an older bottle style, so if you can find this, do yourself a favor and buy this bottle. Don't buy the new one because the new one doesn't have the turned up oak moss like this one does. It's still a good reformulation. Aramis didn't do bad reformulations. They didn't do bad fragrances in this collection. But what they had to do is they had to reformulate to keep it in line with Ifra. And if you can find this older, this older bottle, the um, contrast between the sharp anise in the top with the dirty kind of oak, mo oak moss and patchouli in the base just works wonders. This is called Tuscany Per Uomo. And beautiful bottle uh, back when they used to, everyone used to kind of, every fragrance used to get its own bottle for itself. That's one of the things I loved about one of the things I love about vintage fragrances is the time and effort that they took. And this is classy uh, masculine to me. This is um, this is someone who is, you know, well-groomed. They, they respect the law and order. They follow the rules. You know, they, they, they kind of treat life that in a way where if, if they do good, good things will happen back to them is, is the kind of man that I see wearing this. Um, it is heavy on the citruses and lavender, and that anise note is very sharp. If you like fragrances um, from the 70s that have that um, sharp anise note, like Azaro Porom is a great example of an aromatic fougere that hits you with that sharp anise note, check this one out. This goes a little bit in a green direction because it has a couple green notes like basil, tarragon and patchouli but that anise and caraway combo 
just mix with the citruses and the lavender to just hit you with this beautiful fresh sharpness again this is a summer this is a summer wear for me i like these sharp uh fougere fragrances when it's warmer outside even though it has the oak moss and the tonka bean and cinnamon and sandalwood and all that stuff for me this is summer wear i don't wear these in the winter um i like my heavier fragrances for the winter and um this is this is the bottle that you want and the prices on it haven't really been driven up to crazy levels. I am starting to see the prices steadily increase for the vintage. It's probably double, you know, so you can probably get a full 100 ml bottle of this for uh, 150, 160 bucks, uh, 170 maybe. Whereas the new one, um, I think it's going for about 70, 75 dollars. Uh, because I think they discontinued that whole gentleman's line. So this is the closest looking bottle to what the new gentleman line bottle looks like. But you'll be able to instantly tell the difference because the new one has this sticker that's like half red, half black. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's in the new style bottle where they put all of these fragrances in, Aramis 900 and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, if you like fragrances like Reeve Gauche, if you like YSL Pour Homme, if you like Azaro Pour Homme, you know, this is, um, this is, uh, this is such a great take on that. And it's so masculine. It's so, um, it's just, it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's, it, it makes an impression, you know, it really leaves somebody with an impression that, wow, that person has fantastic taste to me. It does. They don't follow the trends. They're not out there wearing, um, you know, what, what's that stronger with you absolutely line or what are they doing? Chestnuts. They're not out there wearing, you know, roasted chestnut flavored fragrances because that's just the thing this year. And, you know, they're, this is timeless. This doesn't follow trends. <sighs> so good. Um, it's so, so good. And, and, Rich Mitch told me the other day, he goes, I can't wait for March 1st to roll around so I can switch my fragrances to the summer, uh, spring and summer rotation. And I told him, I don't want that to happen because I love wearing the heavier, darker, deeper leathers and stuff like that. Those are my favorite type of fragrances. But smelling this, I miss stuff like this now that I'm smelling it again. Um, so maybe part of me does want to start wearing stuff like this again soon, but uh, great juice. If you can find this bottle, get it. Uh, this is one of the best in the category. Okay, now we're going to go to something that I only have a 25 ml bottle of. I wish I had a bigger bottle. Um, this is not my favorite in in from this house because my favorite is um, is uh, Zeno. But uh, this is a fragrance called Davidoff by Davidoff. This is their first masculine fragrance from 1984 obviously it's 84 it wouldn't be in this list but this is the original whenever they were issuing these under come on whenever they were issuing these under davidoff fragrances i just want to show you well you can kind of see it right there towards the top Davidoff fragrances, that's what you want. Um, if you can find this, you know, before the reformulation, this is the bottle that you want, the vintage. Uh, because the leather and the castorium on this especially are turned up. And that's, that's extremely important with this fragrance because here, this, this is a leather fragrance. Whereas this is not a leather fragrance. This is a sharp aromatic fougere that happens to have leather in the base to round everything out. This is a leather fragrance that uses green. Look at the green color of the juice. That's kind of a sharp giveaway. I would call this a green leather because it has these green notes like basil, artemisia, patchouli, uh, but then they mix with notes that I absolutely love. Leather, castorium, um, orris, so it's a little bit powdery. That orris leather combo by the way is a killer it's an absolute killer combo for me when i see orison leather it's almost like you know moth to the flame i'm there 
And um, this, this definitely does that. For some reason, I don't love it instant. It's not, a, it's not something where I want to go buy five backup bottles of, okay? Just for whatever reason. It's a, it's a great fragrance. I love it. Um, but if I had to pick my favorite from the House of Davidoff, it would be Lancaster Zeno, and then this would actually be second. But as you can see, I only have a 25 ml bottle. I really wish I had a, um, I really wish I had a bigger bottle of this. But um, you know, 25 ml will hold me over for a little while. And then we're gonna go to a fragrance that I absolutely adore. You can still get it for a great price. Um, and the price on this is starting to creep up, but it's nowhere near the insane levels of some of the other vintage masculines like um, Patu Porome or, you know, stuff like that. It, old school Darby from Guerlain. It's not there. Um, you, can, you can find a great deal on this juice. This is a great intro, I think, to um, vintage fragrances because... It has so many of the of the elements that old school fragrances have that you know vintage hunters like me know and love. It has the big oak moss, you know. It has the um, the the vintage leather. It has the you know seventies, eighties green balsam fir and pine and tree sap type feel. But it's also a they consider this Fragrantica calls this an amber fougere and. This also has some sharpness to it, uh, but not the same sharpness as this because it's not an anise sharpness that actually hits you. It's a um, it's a herbaceous green sharpness where everything kind of mixes together and just hits you at once. Um, for me, I just experience this fragrance as one giant you know, Wall Street ball that just comes at me. But what what I get, I absolutely love. I love the way that it feels when I wear it. Um, you know, I love the green pine and, and balsams and leather. I put this in my favorite leather fragrances, even though leather, this is much less of a leather fragrance than something like Bellamy, for example. Um, leather is a main part of the note, but there's other parts of this fragrance that, you know, round everything out. There's this beautiful Artemisia hit. So think about the Artemisia that you get in the opening of, uh, Dior Jouz. There's old school Carnation. Um, this is just a great example of an 80s fragrance. Um, and if you look, this is a splash bottle that I procured for almost next to nothing. I think I paid 40 bucks for this or something. And then Anuj sent me this partial for free when I did a big order. Um, and this is a spray. Uh, this is a tester bottle. So I have a, I have a backup, which this is backup bottle worthy to me. Um, and it's, it's just funny to me that this doesn't get more love. I'm a little shocked that I'm looking right now, you can get a 50 ml just like this um, for 40 bucks. You know, for a vintage lover, this is an amazing value for money because of what it offers you. You know, these, these kind of compositions, I don't think they could create it nowadays, even if they wanted to. If, if Roja Dove or... Zerjoff or you know let's say one of these high-end brands wanted to go create something like this I don't I don't think they could uh, the oak moss would really restrict the ability to, to create this uh, the oak moss restriction at 0.1 percent would be very prohibitive to these brands um, and then it almost feels like there's nitro musks in these in these old school fragrances that are banned so I, I really think they would have a hard time creating this, even with the new modern synthetics and how far everything's come. I think they would struggle. So that's why these are just so valuable. I mean, they just, they just, uh, they, they cannot be recreated. You know, it's like a time capsule that takes you back in time. And look at this, you get this, you know, it reminds me of like a, a boardroom in the 80s, big, um, expensive wood, 
conference tables, um, you know, the big phones that used to be bigger than your head and, you know, all that good stuff. That's, that's, that's what you get here. You get all of that. You get the leather of, a of, um, you know, an eighties supercar. You get the leather of a, you get this Bentley, this old school Bentley leather. I think of, a executive working on Wall Street being driven to work in his Bentley and he gets out and he goes and you know sits at his mahogany wood desk and expensive chair and you know he's smoking cigars even though there's no tobacco in this I get a hint of this tobacco like feel for some reason it just has that entire atmosphere and I just love this fragrance and it's amazing that it hasn't been uh, the price hasn't been bid up more it's just it just it's shocking to me um, because it's, it's definitely worth it. Excuse me. Whilst I hydrate. Okay. Next, we're going to go to another fragrance that, um, I think also uses nitro musks, to be honest. This, the last one I showed you, Wall Street, and I think this one uses nitro musks as well. It, it has that feel about it. Uh, I think I, I heard somebody, uh, or read somebody say that on Fragrantica or Parfumo, and it, and it really clicked because I smelled this the next morning when I wore it, and there's no way an old school fragrance like this without those kind of nitro musks would push because this is a herbal, fresh, you know, aromatic fougere, and one of the best aromatic fougeres too, by the way. If you're an aromatic fougere lover which I love a good aromatic fougere every now and then. Um, if you came to me and said, Ramsey, give me your best under the radar aromatic fougere nobody talks about, it would be this. What is this, you might ask? If you've seen it, you probably know. If you've never seen it, look at the bottle. Just look at that. Look, it looks like a ruler. Uh, um, and the name is outstanding. Not outrageous, outstanding. Look at this. Businessman. Panage Businessman, which this house, by the way, is still in business and they're releasing fragrances. Um, one of the reviewers, I can't think of his name, he just issued his own fragrance called Smolder. Um, Chris from something or other uh, talked about one of their newer fragrances that he loves, but... Let me just show you the, um, the, the, the gorgeous presentation. I love this presentation. Some people might say it's tacky. I think this is beautiful. Look at this. Look at that. It's got the name right there, Panage. It's got the symbol right there. And look at the atomizer. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. That is just 80s encapsulated and the smell. <sighs> this fragrance, and again, I've said this before, I'm probably beating a dead horse, I'll say it again. All these fragrances I bought with my own money, they don't even make this fragrance anymore. So I get absolutely nothing for talking about how great this fragrance is. Even if I got something, I would never sell out my uh, reputation because the number one thing to me uh, when doing these videos, I think, is reputation. If you are proven to be a liar and you're given free bottles and you talk about, oh, I'm letting you in on a secret I found, you know, you're never going to get that back ever. No matter, no matter how, no matter how honest you then pledge to be after that. Once you do that once, it's gone forever. So my pledge is to be as honest with everyone as possible and just let the chips fall where they may. And this is my sleeper hidden aromatic fougere pick. Um, and I think this bottle can be had for, I don't know, there's a mini I'm looking at right now for $10, 10 for 5 ml. Um, La Parfume had some of these. I think I paid 50, 40 bucks for this. I don't remember exactly, but I can tell you that it is one of the most amazing aromatic fougeres I've ever smelled, ever. 
I mean, full stop, period. And it's a classic aromatic fougere with sharpness of artemisia and rosemary. So you get that rosemary from Paco Rabanne Porome. You get the artemisia, the greenness. There's tarragon. Uh, there is some floors. Of course, it's an aromatic fougere, so it's going to have geranium. That's a must. Uh, it's, it's, it's got thyme. It's a little bit aromatic. It's got jasmine. But the florals here are done in such a masculine way because of the way that the musk, I think, in the base is used. The musk in the base here is a revelation. That's why I think it's nitro musks. And right when you think that that sharpness from the aromatic fougere here, the sharpness kind of hits you in the first hour and then it starts to subside, right? Because this is anise in the, in the opening. Here, the sharpness hits you and you're almost expecting it to uh, kind of just decrease over time and it just stays and stays and stays and you're, I mean, six, seven, eight hours in, you're sitting here smelling it going, when is this going to fade? When's it going to die down? And it just, the, the, um, you know, I, I have a couple regrets in my, in my fragrance, um, journey. I hate that word, but I'll, I'll say it. Fragrance journey. Um, number one, is not buying a 200 ml of Le Leon and only buying a 75 ml bottle. And number two is not buying a backup bottle of this stuff. Uh, if you're an aromatic fougere lover, my God. And the value for money on these two, the value for money is outrageous. If you want to get into vintage fragrances and you don't want to spend as much as I'm going to show you on the next one, the next one is rare. The next one is expensive. I paid a lot of money to have this bottle. Um, if you can find it for cheap, get it. It's going to be the, um, photo, uh, the, uh, photo that's tied the thumbnail that's tied to the video on this one. Um, but if you can find businessman or wall street, trust me, if you want to get into vintage fragrances, those are great ways to dip your toe in and not pay a lot of money. Okay. I'm going to show you this next one. I don't know if I've shown it off before. Uh, maybe I did once, but, um, this is a fragrance that uh, I'm so glad and lucky to have 100 ml of. It's, a, um, it's also a fougere with some leather. So you notice there's a little bit of a theme, right? This is considered an amber fougere. There's leather in the base. Um, this is a uh, aromatic fougere. There's leather in the base. This is a chiffre. There's leather in the base. This is a fougere. The notes are unknown to me. There, this isn't even listed on Fragrantica. It's called Bally Masculine. Bally is a very high-end, very high-end Swiss uh, brand, if I'm not mistaken. And now I think they're relegated to making like, sh you know, $3,000 shoes and $780 gloves and stuff like that. You know, they're a high-end uh, brand. Um, and Bally released this fragrance in 1984 called Bally Masculine. And look at the bottle. It has this like marble, you know, it has this marble type texture to it. Look at that. Um, I don't think it's marble. I think it's glass that they made it look like it's marble. The, the cap is a little bit rusty because it's old. Um, but the fragrance, if you wanted an elegant fragrance, Oh, that's so good. If you wanted a scent no one is wearing, no one is wearing, I guarantee you, you will cross the earth. Uh, you could walk across the earth meeting people, and you will not meet someone else wearing Bally Masculine. I had to pay a lot of money for this bottle, but uh, it was, it was um, sealed and unused and all that good stuff, and... Um, uh, it's a fougere, but but you get the leather up front. So it's almost like, whereas with a lot of these, the leather is kind of a supporting role. You know what I mean? Uh, here, you kind of get the leather up front and you think it's going to be a leather fragrance at first. It almost tricks you because when you first spray, you get this leather blast that you think, oh, wow, this is a leather fragrance. And then all of a sudden, it just switches and it turns itself into a very refined, extremely refined 
uh, classical fougere. It has a lot of fougere aspects to it. Uh, big lavender. But the leather is just unbelievable in this one. Um, and it's it's so masculine. It's so refined. It's so classy. It's 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 just 1980s. It's 1980s in a bottle, and um, the prices on these are insane. I think the guy that you know I bought this from initially wanted $800. I was able to talk him down pretty substantially, but still, you know, this is this is more for the connoisseurs. This is more for the people who uh, have already explored the low-hanging fruit, and now they want to kind of jump into something else. So. Uh, if you can get a decant or a sample of this, check it out. It'll it'll blow your mind if you're a, if you're a fougere lover. I've shown off some amazing fougeres, by the way. The last one is not a fougere. Um, the last one is one of my favorite patchouli fragrances of all time. This is from the house of Giorgio Beverly Hills, and it sure enough is Giorgio for men. Um, this is a vintage. Uh, you can almost tell by the juice color. If you find a new bottle of this, the juice color almost looks pale green, uh, like they Xerox copied it, and all that came out was this pale green color. Um, speaking of Xerox, there's an 80s um, brand for you. But this is one of the most beautiful honey patchoulis ever. I mean, period, full stop. Um, I think I love Givenchy Gentleman from 1974 a little bit more than this fragrance because... The dirtiness, the castorium in that one is turned up. Here, it's almost like they removed the castorium. It still has that animalic honey, which I love. I, I love the animalic honey. Um, and it keeps the beautiful patchouli and oak moss and amber and old school carnation and all that stuff. Um, but it's... Um, it's just a little bit cleaner than Givenchy Gentlemen, but they share big similarities. So for me, there's a direct line from Pierre Cardin Pour Monsieur in 72, Givenchy Gentlemen, 74, Giorgio Beverly Hills, 84, and then um, Pavarotti in um, the 90s. Uh, direct correlation between those four fragrances, to, to my nose. Um, each one took the torch of the last one and kind of ran with it, you know. My favorite iteration is the, is the Givenchy Gentleman from 1974. That's one of my favorite fragrances of all time. I put that in my top ten fragrances of all time, but this is right there. If you said, Ramsey, you can't have Givenchy Gentleman from 1974, pick something similar to fill its hole, this is what I would pick. I absolutely love this fragrance. I love wearing it. I love how easy it is for me to wear. It just fits my personality perfectly. Um, this is the vintage. I'll try to show you. It's a little bit tough to see the details. I don't know if you can see. Um, but, yeah, if you can find a vintage bottle, um, the bottom of this one says, Extraordinary. Eau de Toilette, batch code 4JA, I have no idea what any of that means, I just know it's a vintage, uh, the cap barely hangs on, I mean it'll come right off, so you gotta be careful with that, but um, fantastic juice, again I only have 50 ml, but I will cherish this one, I'll baby this fragrance to its dying days, and again my plan is to finish all of these fragrances before I die. So I've got work to do. I've got spraying to do. But that is the year of 1984. Obviously, there are some fragrances from 1984 that um, I don't own or I don't have. Um, can't You can't own everything. I mean, unless you won the lottery or something. But other than that, you can't own everything. So if there are fragrances from 84, actually, you know what? I'm looking here. And uh, there's a couple that I did not put on my list. I should have waited to do this list because I actually have, um, you know what? There are a bunch of fragrances that I didn't grab that should be on this list. I feel uh, almost like I'm doing a quick disservice to you guys. You know what? 
I'm going to do something I've never done, and I am going to, um, I'm going to grab them. So you guys sit tight. We're going to have an intermission. I'm going to grab these fragrances, and I will be right back. Hang on. Count to ten. Okay, I hope that wasn't too painful. Um, I can't believe I forgot to grab these. I must have done a page two and just completely forgot. So here's what we're going to do. There is a fragrance from 1984 that I have coming in my next haul. Uh, it's called Satis from Givenchy, and I have a vintage coming uh, from Enchante Perfumes. Thank you, Anouj. Uh, and the other fragrance from 84 that I would absolutely love to try, it's probably the number one fragrance, looking at this from 1984, that I don't own and people like Eugene absolutely love. And that's Coco by Chanel. Just the regular vintage Coco, the EDT. Uh, I feel terrible, honestly. I feel like I feel like I've done a disservice to the perfume world that I've never tried that. Um, that's a Jacques Poles creation, and um, that's Coco the EDT, and uh, I would love to try that. But let me show you a couple that I'm a little ashamed that I left off of the list. Number one is Palomo Picasso, okay? So this is a, um, this is created by uh, Francis Bocris. I'm not familiar with... I'm not familiar with her work, um, and this is a Shifra. This is supposed to be a. This is supposed to be like an animalic Shifra, which you would think is 100% up my alley. Um, you would think I would love this fragrances because I love fragrances that are you know similar to this, but. For whatever reason, I struggle with this one, and this is a tester here. I'll show you the. This is the. Um, this is a 2007 bottle, by the way. Um, this is created by Luxury Products LLC Parfums Palomo Picasso. So maybe I should have tried to get an even older bottle than 2007. Um, but here's the notes. The notes are on the back. I'll try to read them to you here. You've got um, you have uh, oh geez uh, you've got uh, jasmine rose and floral bouquet. That's literally what it says. Then you have some of this is in French so I'm trying to translate here. Um Iris Santal uh, Mousse de Sheen, and you've got Amber Patchouli and Wood. So I'm guessing the um, I'm 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 guessing <sighs> that's really good. I'm guessing that you know they're just kind of listing the highlights. Some other notes listed on Perfumo that's not listed here are Angelica, Coriander. Mimosa, patchouli, oak moss, honey, sandalwood, vetiver, amber. So it's a complex chiffre. Maybe I need to give it some more wears. I've only worn it a couple times to bed. I haven't given it a full wear yet. Just because every time I wear it, it kind of puts me off for some reason. And I can't figure out why. But that came out in 84. I can't believe I almost forgot these. Um, I feel like someone should reach through the camera and slap me. Um, okay, number two that I nearly forgot, and um, a little bit of a travesty. I, this could not go. Uh, this could not go 
unchecked. I had to go grab these because it would have been an absolute travesty. And I wasn't going to redo this video four times like Rich Mitch tried to do yesterday. This is going to be a, a once and done take. And that is Versace Loam. Now, this is a modern bottle. Um, this is not a vintage, but this does have that men's restroom accord, if you will. Not as bad as, um, well, I say as bad, but uh, not like Boss Number One. Boss Number One has it in a way that I actually really like. This one has it in a way that I don't really like. And that's why I never really splurged on an older bottle. This is a tester that I got for very, very cheap. Um, and this is the modern formulation. Euro Italia. Um, made in Italy. But it's just the modern. It's not the vintage. The vintage has different writing on it. You'll be able to tell... Uh, if you look at, at, at bottles, um, I would love to get a vintage and just do kind of like a comparison video. Maybe I'll buy like a, a, a small vintage. If I can find like a 10 ml or 15 ml. Um, maybe I'll buy it and do a comparison for you, for you guys one day. Um, but, uh, this, this fragrance, it's, um, it's Versace's first masculine fragrance if I'm not mistaken and it's very citrus heavy so if you like the citrus heavy fragrances of the past but maybe updated for the 80s there is a leather note here but it's all kind of underneath you know very old school very masculine you would think I would love it but I really don't and maybe it's because I have a current formulation so for a vintage hunter like me I really should find an old bottle of this and then the last one I almost forgot um, which would be a bit of a travesty, is um, Lacoste, the original from 84. Uh, and I've got a, this I do have a vintage of. You can see it says Sofa Par International right there. And um, this was created by Jean Carlio when he was the in-house perfumer, perfumer for uh, Jean Patou. And um, they basically owned Lacoste and used them as like their sport um, uh, brand or their sport uh, division, if you will. And this is basically just like the color of the bottle. The, the color of the juice here uh, is, is very reminiscent of what you're going to get in this fragrance. It is big and green with oak moss. Um, you know, there's a lot of citruses here. It's aromatic. There's galbanum, there's basil, there's, um, some old school carnation. Um, and the, the oak moss in this is what really sets this apart in the vintage. Go figure, right? It's always the oak moss. Um, but it's also fuller. It hasn't been reformulated. Lacoste sells these for very cheap now. Don't bother with the new if it says Procter & Gamble or something on the distributor, I wouldn't get it. I would stick with the uh, the Sofa Par. Um, let's see if there's other fragrances from 84. Um, oh, you know, there's also Dunhill Edition, which I have a uh, 5ml mini of, but um, I don't have a full bottle of that. Um... I'm just looking through to see if there's any other fragrances that I should mention. Um, so let me know if there's other fragrances from 84. Let me know. I have uh, Isatis coming, which is spelled Y-S-A-T-I-S. -S, um, and that was created by um, Dominique Ropion. So I'm a little shocked that doesn't get more love. I have an old school uh, vintage with only a, a couple ingredients listed on the uh, on the bottle. And that is, that is a very complex fragrance. That's a floral chiffre um, for women. So that's another one where the, um, you know, price on the vintages for women haven't skyrocketed yet like the men's. But um, so thank you for uh, sitting with me through the detour and the intermission. Hope you found a way to entertain yourself while I was gone for 10, 15 seconds. And um, this is a good breakdown excuse me, of the year 1984. Again, if there are other fragrances on here I should try, please let me know. If anyone knows where I can get a vintage cocoa from, 
let me know. That's a fragrance that's heavily on my list to get, and I just can't find it anywhere. Old Chanel's are hard to find from a respectable source. So um, do let me know, and we will keep in touch. I will see you again either tomorrow with another video or tonight with an unboxing if, uh, if a fragrance that I expect coming is coming today. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for interacting, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.